Hey, welcome to Tech Talks. Today we have Vincent KK of Legit Cars. Legit Cars is a platform that helps legitimize cars, but um, I'll allow Vincent to tell us more about it. So Vincent, welcome to the show. Thank you. And so um, tell us um, a little bit about Legit Cars. Why did you start it? How long has it been going on for? Okay, two years ago, I wanted to buy a used car. I needed to buy a used car. So I saw a car. You just wanted to buy a car. <laughs> you just needed to buy a car that yes, would exactly. help me do what I was doing then. So I saw a car I liked. The price was fantastic. But then, living in Abuja then, vehicle theft was a huge problem. And I knew that most of the vehicles they steal from people, they still resell it to other people who don't even know these vehicles are stolen. So I asked the seller, how am I going to know this vehicle is not a stolen vehicle that will put me into trouble? And there was no way. I couldn't believe there was no way I could check in minutes if that vehicle was a stolen vehicle. There and then I saw that gap. I said to myself, now this is a gap I have to do something about. I'm not tech savvy, I'm not a developer, so I knew the first thing I had to do was to build a team. So the moment I left that place, I called a few of my friends who are developers. They came, we sat a few times, they bought into the idea. In three months, we had an MVP. Legit car was born. Let me ask a question. So what were you doing before? This? What was the occupation before you just <laughs> threw everything out of the, you know, out of the, um, threw the baby out with the bathwater and said, this is my, this is my calling. Okay. Uh, even up to your last year, I was supplying diesel to okay. construction companies. Yes. But then, you know, some of the things we start doing early in life, there are things that just put food on our table. Or when you find that thing you really love doing, you throw away every other thing. So, uh, so legit, uh, legit car. So, um, how did you, I mean, like, and I think this will be interesting for people, so yes. how did you, you know, I mean, first of all, you have a job, that suddenly you're now taking, putting a lot of that uh, kind of cash flow yes. into this project that is not tested, because this is the first, uh, one of the first of its kind. Have you seen anything else, have you seen, have you seen anything from other places that give you a, an idea that this, this is probably a sustainable um, venture? Okay, uh, the first outing we went to, in fact, before we built the prototype, we printed flyers and myself and my co-founder and others, we went around all the bars in Abuja at night. We gave people flyers about what we do. The feedback we got was very, very encouraging. We saw that we are really doing something we want. And then it's not just about um, having that gap. We also, through that feedback, we are able to to find the best possible way of solving that problem. It's not just sitting behind computers and not talking to people. There is a problem, yes. Are you solving it the right way, the way people want it to be solved? So that was the feedback we got. Our first outing was um, uh, the United Nations Influx Hackathon that was held here in Lagos. At that event, we came third. We just had the MVP. We didn't even have users. So our idea alone, got us to the third position in that event. And then we, we were so fired up, we went back. And by the end of the year, we were named one of the best justice innovations in the world by Hill Innovating Justice in the Hague, Netherlands. And um, we were there uh, in the Hague, Netherlands to, to present our innovation in one of the most iconic venues in the world, in the Peace Palace. So since then, there has been no looking back. So has it been? So did we get any funding or investments, or was it just has it purely been yes. bootstrapping from your own, from you guys? Okay, when we started, it was it was um, um, funds by the co-founders. So that got us to a point where we got um, okay. The first external funding we got was from uh, Hill Innovating Justice. So they gave us a grant of um, ten thousand euros. This year again, we are Tony Lumelu Entrepreneurs. So that comes with a grant of five thousand dollars, and then, but we have raised equity funding. Uh, we've raised ten million in equity funding, so that's so that's that's fantastic. So, um, so how far have you progressed now that you have users? How many users? How many people have clicked on your website? How many people have keyed in their chatted numbers? And what has the feedback been like? Okay, when we started, when we started last, when we started last year, we it was free. So at some point, throughout last year or about three months ago, four months ago, it was free. So this year, sometime we said to ourselves, we can't do this free forever. 
we, we know we had to do it free for some time for awareness. But then let's see if people would actually want to pay for this. So since three months ago till now, without any publicity, we've had about 80 people pay for it. So we are hoping that once we put it out there in the public, much more people will pay for it. How many people have used it free? Uh, since we started free, we've had about um, 3,000 searches. When Disrupt Africa and Tech Point did a story on us last year, a lot of people came and used it free. So, but you know, when you start charging, you start free, and then you start charging. Not everybody will want to pay for it, and it's the first of its kind, untested and all. So, so the last question. So, I mean, like, I think it's great. I mean, you put your VIN number. So, how? So, so if I put my VIN number, mm -hmm. if I don't, I know. Get a, 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 a chassis number of a car out yeah. there yeah. and put my, the number in there. Does it tell who the owner is or the registered owner is? No, what it does is how it actually works is we have a database of missing vehicles, yeah. though we have about 1,100 now, and this data is sourced from a variety of sources we get from insurance companies. Uh, last year, even without knowing anybody, Examans had give us what they had. And then um, we have from vehicle recovery and um, tracking companies. And then victims of vehicle theft also visit our website with a valid police report and they can report their vehicles are stolen. So what, when you put in your chassis number, what it does is it, it first of all tells you the kind of vehicle. And then um, the, the year of manufacture, it does that fact check. Yeah. What, why that is important is you can't, our system doesn't um, accept invalid chassis numbers okay so it's still uh, a feature that people love people some people just come and use that feature and go mm. like when they want to buy a car they just want to know the year because car sellers you know what they do 2010 also yeah. is 2013 yes. so some people come to use that and some people actually come to see if that chassis number has been altered yeah because if it has been altered if some characters have been replaced it's not going to give yeah. that information yeah. so so definitely yeah so definitely so yeah. what it does it it searches the database and tells you if it's now a database as a missing vehicle. So, one, you have a database of missing vehicles. Yes. Two, you have a system that authenticates if the chassis Chass number is uh, real or not and gives you the information yes. about the car. Yes. And so, how are you going to make money from this thing? And how are you going to get more people? Because the challenge I see now is, you know, um, marketability, awareness, and also the business model. Okay. Now we have, uh, this year, we developed two more products for businesses. Now, uh, businesses who, uh, businesses like insurance companies and, um, and, and vehicle inspection um, companies can just get our APIs and put it into their system. It, it does, whenever any vehicle enters into their workshop, they put in the chassis number where they usually do it. It makes the search automatically at the background without needing, without them needing to visit our website that's one then we have referrals for 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 be, for car related businesses like um we we have been talking with um checky what we can do is um they put a referral link on their website and they get a percentage on every successful referral that comes through them now this is important because when we were in the netherlands we didn't just go there to snap pictures and talk to people we we actually studied to see how it is that in the Netherlands, vehicles never go missing. Now we discover that if you walk into a mechanic workshop, the first thing they do before they touch your vehicle is to input your chassis number in their system. If that vehicle has been reported stolen, it will, it will, it, it will be shown it's a stolen vehicle. So you can't successfully repair, visit... Repair in a, a stolen car again. You, you can't do anything with Unless it. Unless you have your own mechanic yes. shop. Now, uh, some weeks back, we, we, we talked with the vice president, we showed him what we were doing. So we, we told him we wanted to um, help the police with what we are doing. We are developing an offline model of this, such that if, if the police stops people and they have any reason to suspect a vehicle has been reported missing, they can just type in the chassis number of that vehicle in an SMS and send to a short code we provide. And then it searches in seconds. It's, it, it shows you if that vehicle has been replaced or not. Now, this is huge. It could significantly improve the, uh, the chances of recovering any missing vehicle in Nigeria. So if we can be able to attain this, which we are really working towards, that's where we are headed, to institutionalize this, such that it will be almost impossible to use or to resell a stolen vehicle in Nigeria.
So have you uh, spoken to the, I'm just thinking about all the possible use cases. Have you spoken to the FRSC, Federal Road Safety Corps? Well, um, what we can do with them is the API option. Yeah. Yes, and then we want to get our database to such a place where we can say with seven, about 70% certainty or even higher that a vehicle is a stolen vehicle or not. At this point, we've not gotten to that place. So before we can be able to get that kind of organization on board, we have to attain that level of certainty. Okay. Um, I'll probably give you more ideas offline. Um, Thank you. Finally, Thank you. finally just a uh, question. So you've had about 3,000 people. Do you like monitor gender? Gender, um, gender searches, male, female, and uh, what percentage of male of uh, male to female access the website? Okay, this week we uh, yes earlier this week we started uh, doing promotion on Instagram and um, Facebook. Okay. So about on Instagram, uh, what we noticed was that more ladies access our site from Instagram. Instagram. On Instagram, we have about 60% ladies. Then Facebook, right, yeah. yes, Facebook was about 57% male. Okay. So the difference is not really much. much. Yeah. So it's um, it's not really, it, it doesn't, what we do, everybody uses vehicles. So women buy cars, men buy cars. Though we are expecting that more men will be willing to pay. Wait. Because women have a way of sometimes being carefree. But then, men will be more willing to pay. The email addresses that pay so far, they're mostly men. Yeah. Just a few women have paid. So. Final, so, final question. So, where do you see the JIT car in the next one year um, product? What would, you, what would you like the numbers to be and um, how um, do you intend to get, get there? Okay, this year we have um, we have signed a very very important partnership with um, Carfax.ng. Now, what Carfax does is they are like Nigerian arm of Carfax.com abroad. So they print, they they, they provide vehicle uh, vehicle um, vehicle histories for people who are about to buy cars and for any other person who might be needing it. So we signed a very important agreement with them, meaning that in the next couple of weeks, every vehicle report printed from carfax.ng would have our report showing if that vehicle has been replaced stolen in Nigeria or not. Second, um, in the next couple of years, we are, we, are, uh, we are hoping that we will be able to make it almost impossible to use or resell a stolen vehicle in Nigeria. Now, the recovery, the recovery, um, the recovery rate of missing vehicles in Nigeria is less than 50%. It's about 48%. We can make that, get that up to 95% when we eventually succeed with this. So when we are succeeding, it's not just legit car succeeding, the whole country is succeeding mm -hmm. because we are making Nigeria a much safer place For to cars. live in and to do business. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you very much. I wish you all the success and we'll continue the conversation offline. Thank you, sir.